In today's video, we're going to be looking at the depths of Roblox scripting for the third time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, in this series I go over more unknown Roblox functions and functions you don't really see every day. So let's get right into it. Oh, and by the way, if you are interested in this series, go ahead and watch the two previous videos I've covered on this. So the first thing is assert. And basically what assert does is it throws an error. So we're going to put in like a statement or a value and it's going to check if that is true or false. And if it's false, it's going to print a error to the output. So it's pretty much used in error handling and you put in a condition and if it's true, uh, nothing happens, but if it's false, it'll print an error to the output and we can also uh, put in a message for that error so that we see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a value and I'm gonna say it's equal to five. I'm gonna say assert value, which is value, is greater greater than zero and if we want to put in a, a message uh, that there might have been an error well, we'll say value must be greater than zero going into our game there is no error because five is greater than zero so let's try a smaller number so let's put in here negative one when we run our game we can see that it gives us the error that says value must be greater than zero and there's the error message just like how we put it in the string right here very very simple function and then the next one is called select and basically what select does is it returns us an argument um, of whatever index we put in so it's going to find an argument based off the index we give it in a variable number of arguments I went over a video of this before but if you don't know what var args are or are variable arguments, it's basically the arbitrary three dots and parameters. So let's say you have a function. What I'm talking about is the three dots here. And what select does is we can get um, a certain argument from these dots and then you know we just have it. So this is really simple. So I'm just gonna again make a function called example and our three dots which are the arbitrary amount of numbers or whatever we put in here and I'm gonna say local second argument is equal to select uh, select and I'm gonna put in the index so let's say I wanted to get the second index of this arbitrary amount of numbers so we're gonna get the second index and we're just going to get it from there uh, our three dots there and then we are going to print the second argument and finally we're going to call example and toss in one two and three so this is what I'm talking about basically the three dots represent whatever we put in here uh, so if this were to work popular properly we would send in this and it would give us the second index which would be two right because that's kind of hard to get an argument out of just a random list of numbers so we can get the second index using select and as you can see in the output it prints us two if we were to change this to another number let's say we wanted to get the third index and we have like uh, maybe a whole bunch of different other values like hey five true false no and we were to do this again it's the third one and it gives us true now I'm not saying that you can only use uh, the three dots in this case using select but that is what it's most commonly used in. And the next one we have is next. As you can see here, next. And it's basically like an, an alternative way to loop through stuff. Like it's basically a pairs type thing to loop through stuff but you guys will see what I'm talking about. So you can use next to traverse through keys in a table and this is most commonly uh, you know you would use this especially if you don't know the keys in a table in advance so it gives us the table which we would want to loop through and also the certain index and um, basically the index is where we would want to start looping through in the table so if you just leave this as nil or just not leave anything it'll start at the very beginning so how we can use this is I'm going to make a table, I'll just call it my table, and the table will be equal to A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 3. 
when we have done that, we're then going to use next to loop through all this. So local key comma value is equal to next and then my table, which is again the table. And we're just going to leave this as nil because we want to loop through the first thing. All right. And then we're going to put this in a while key do loop. And we're going to say print key value. Uh, so we'll have the key right next to the value. So it would look like one and then a and b2 c3 all right and then down here we're going to say key comma value is equal to next once again and put in my table and then key so just kind of a harder way to loop through stuff um but yeah so basically we are starting here to loop through it and while we have the key we're going to print it and we're also going to get the next key and value running this you will see it says a1 uh Oh, wait, why does it say C3? Hold on. Okay, guys, so the reason why this was happening, you were seeing A1, C3, B2, is because the order uh, that you put into the elements using next, the order of that is not guaranteed to be the exact same as it is in the table. So basically using next, that's why it's kind of like a more unknown thing. It doesn't exactly guarantee the order uh, derived from the actual table itself. Because Lua tables are hash tables, which means like the order of keys is based on the actual function and not on the actual like intersection order, not uh, I meant ins insertion order. So if we actually wanted to sort these, well, we would have to use tables, table.sort, and I can get this actually coded up for you guys real quick. So pretty much I have made a new keys table and I'm looping through it using pairs now and that like you would rather want to use this instead of next so I would just recommend not using next but it's just a cool thing to know about but this is like how you would actually sort it using tables and everything like that and now the next thing we have is the bit 32 library which allows us to perform bitwise upper operations so if we had uh, wanted to do a mouth calculation like 823 Eight four divided by sixty four, we would get local a is equal to bit thirty two dot r shift, and then put in our number from before, which is eight two three eight four, and then we're gonna put in seven. So basically, what's going on with this function to do these bitewise operations and you know doing stuff with the zeros and ones and everything like on the back end, is it's taking this number right here eight two three eight four. And it's taking it into binary and then it is shifting this number in binary right by seven uh, bits given actually I already have this figured out cuz I uh, got like uh, what the thing is and this is this number right here is this number in binary so it shifts it seven. Oh, sorry this is the result of that so this is the result of this number in binary being shifted by seven digits and you know the the higher the bits are discarded and the zeros are left but whatever whatever all that's gone and then the binary of this is equal to 643 like I have figured out down here so you can do a ton of stuff with these bitewise operations and uh, putting stuff through binary and figuring all that stuff out using the bit32 library and then the last function I have for you guys is the debug library. It's not really a function, but it's the debug library with all of these things. And what basically this whole library does, it has to deal with how uh, it Lua is running in our game. So it's basically that it allows for us to look and manipulate the Lua runtime and basically kind of debug in also a way too using, you know, because it says debug. <laughs> So this has to mainly do with like memory stuff, the micro profiler and everything like that. So we're going to say debug dot and we're going to make a new profile for the uh, micro profiler debug. Oh, this is debug n. So we're going to say, oh, I said debug profile begin. And then we're going to start a label for that profile in the micro profiler. And we're just going to say test. And we can also like wait a little bit and then say uh, debug dot profile end and it'll basically just automatically stop this profile from running because uh, that's the most recent one and we can also use debug dot set memory category to assign a custom tag to the current 
thread's memory so we can easily find it in the micro profiler and maybe the more common one that we use is to use trace back so debug.trace back and this can help us uh, finding errors so I'm just gonna make an artificial error real quick and so I'll call inner uh, function and I'm going to make my own error and say just error I guess error and then out of here I'm going to make another function just outer function for a lack of better naming and then I'm gonna just call inner function and when we do this, I am also going to call success and then message is equal to pcall and say outer function. We're going to say if not success, then print error. And then we're going to say concatenate with our message. And we're also going to say print debug dot trace back. So when we run this, it also gives us our error thing here like we would have got from up here. And then debug.traceback gives us from where the error uh, comes back from to help us identify and resolve our issues in our game. And yeah, guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.